what we're going to talk about very briefly is, is that at, so now we're, we're kind of going to dive into the first layer of the water because if you notice in the Bible, it says, and the spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. So that would kind of let you know right there that, well, if there was something already in the deep, then there has to be a story before the Bible. Not to mention, it talks about how, and then, you know, I'm just citing this, this, this work here that billions of people believe in. It also talks about how God destroyed the earth with a flood. How much do you think the flood would affect something that was already in the water? It wouldn't. So there you have two logical accounts that if there is something inside the water, which it says that you need water to create all of life. It actually says that all of the elements start on the planet as water first. <laughs> OK, so what I'm saying is, is that even the Bible is staying away from the whole water thing. <laughs> And any kind of like claims that God created the water because the water was a kingdom that was already going on. And we started digging into this a little bit with the Maya, but I don't know, something else kind of dived in and was like, look, man, I'm tired of this because you just go hear a bunch of more stories after the fact. Great mother's about to come through and explain the whole thing. I was great. <laughs> I've been waiting on great mother to explain this. What is going on? And then it took me right into the mermaid thing again. So let me just top down it, turn on some gas on this and go through this process with you. What is the difference between a fish and a snake? Like, sometimes we're not getting like, you know how we were talking about how the, every word for fish actually seemed to be a cognate of soul. And then every time they talk about transmutations of human beings and souls, it always gets into fish and all this kind of stuff. But then we got this whole serpent thing that we were just looking into with the Naga. But then when you take a step back for a moment, it's like, wait a minute. Well, they both have, first of all, when you lay out that this, this vertebrae, like I saw a video today, they laid out one of those longer eels, and just showed you like how long the, the spine is, right? And then also they showed, of course, there were some other fish and the fish have scales. So we're looking at these snakes and these snakes have scales and they also have this long vertebrae. And so we realize that the only difference between a snake and a fish is that the snakes are on land and the fish are in water. So that whole Darwinism thing is again, some type of pun towards the realization that you have water humans or water spirits and then you got physical spirits that actually walk upon the earth but their animator like the the animator the actual core functional module which is the spine connecting into the brain is actually coming from this this uh, uh primordial form okay so this also connects in with why the astral organs okay astral organs have identities okay because see you're looking at the physical organs in your body but i keep telling you look at this look at your spiritual body okay your spiritual body that exists on the astral plane that's tied into this body which one do you really think actually came first obviously that one but everything that you have there you have one here or cognate of it here. That's the only way that I can actually tug, let's say, certain emotions. Like if in the dream you're feeling love, it's because you have something that's connecting right into your physical body that is a replica of what is going on in your spirit body. So you have a spirit organ. And what I'm trying to explain to you is that, as I mentioned before, when you look at Haeckel's radiolaria, that all of the parts of the body, mainly the organs, such as the heart, etc., all came from org organs, or, or excuse me, uh, organisms <laughs> in, from the ocean. And that what architects really were, which were for sure feminine, were beings that put those pieces together in the water. OK, so what I'm saying is, is that the formulation of more advanced beings was the combination of different organic, organic, uh, um, 
organisms that first exist on the astral plane because you could be like okay you could be imagining these people or beings in the ocean and then i don't know a heart there and then you know with a liver and and no 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 that's not what we're talking about in the astral plane though that goes on where different pieces are put together and formulated together because you can do supernatural things there. Basically, you could do anything that your mind can conceive. That's why that space is so powerful because anything you think, let's bring them together and let's make it do this. It'll start doing all of that. Okay, so we need to realize the supernatural plane is in effect. But because you're not, melding with the supernatural plane all the time or we're not talking about spirits in the supernatural plane we don't have communication with supernatural plane all the time etc you can imagine just how many things are going on that human beings are completely unaware of okay so what i'm also going to explain to you is that so your soul so you have this soul if you may which is the gift it's an immortal existence you're always going to be able to recall and think in your own mind and talk to yourself OK, no matter where you're at and what happened and if the big bomb drop or whatever, you're just going to be sitting there talking to yourself about what happened until you decide to create light again. OK, so how so this soul, when it created when it creates light, what it what it's really doing is it's just developing layers around itself or shells. OK, so what is so what a soul is doing is, is it's creating shells around itself with the materials from its own existence. That's why you see shells are building or, or, or mollusks and, and other sea animals are building their shell around them with the, the salt and the slime coming from their own bodies. So what I'm, what I'm getting at here is that the human body is a shell itself. The astral body is a shell itself from the term of what the soul is doing, because what the soul is doing is it's creating all of these. You're calling them identities now. You're calling them vehicles now. It's creating all these things around it. And then obviously the, the magnitude of the being is really determined by how many of these bodies or experiences that it actually has. Okay. Okay.